All right, ladies and gentlemen, I am live, and we are going to talk about the meltdown that is happening right now with John Stewart. Now, I don't know if you guys are a fan of John Stewart. John Stewart has been caught committing heavy, heavy, heavy accusations, and then those same accusations that he was making is the same thing that he was doing in New York City. Ladies and gentlemen, the New York Post, yes, the New York Post has come out and exposed Expose John Stewart. John Stewart just finished having a meltdown going after, ladies and gentlemen, you won't even, he was going after Kevin O'Leary because Kevin O'Leary was defending Donald J. Trump. Ladies and gentlemen, please hit the like button because we have a lot to talk about. Hit the like button right now. Do not waste any time. Also, go to local so you can support this channel. This was reported earlier today. Now, it's been circulating since yesterday because he decided to have a segment only about Donald Trump yesterday. He decided to have a segment about overvaluing properties. He decided to have a segment against Donald Trump. But guess what? John Stewart found to have overvalued his NYC home by 829% after slamming Trump's civil case as not victimless. So apparently this Democrat shield, who I don't know if you guys watch him. I really don't know if you guys like him. I don't know what you guys think about Jon Stewart, but he's been around for a long time in comedy, and he's had, he's had his own late-night show. But ladies and gentlemen, the New York Post is coming out and saying, well, is he going to get the same treatment as Trump? Does he have to pay $300 million by Friday, by Monday? Well, let's do some deep deep diving. And once again, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I really need you guys to join the locals a lot of this content I'm putting out is on the edge and I am not monetized. So if you could go to the locals right now and subscribe, hit the monthly subscription, I would truly, truly appreciate you guys. All right, here we go. This is why he's melting down. <laughs> this is why he's melting down. I'm also going to play what he said, by the way. I'm going to play what he said. Actually, let's play what he said. Let's actually play what he just said. And then we're going to go through the post. This is what he had to say about Kevin O'Leary defending Donald J. Trump. Let's take a listen. And then we're going to go through how the New York Post has exposed. Um, they exposed them big time. Here it is. Here it is. They said, but it didn't It didn't take long for the internet sleuths to look into Stewart's own property history in New York City. And we're going to go through how he overvalued everything. But first, let's take a listen to what he says about Trump and Kevin O'Leary. Um, this is why people are exposing him. Let's take a listen. Surprised to hear this from Kevin O'Leary, a guy who's such an asshole. Wait, <laughs> that even the other people on Shark Tank thinks he's an asshole. <laughs> now, he's very chill. I'm surprised to hear that he's so chill about overvaluing something that he thinks is victimless, because when someone tries to do that to him... Which one of you do I absolutely tear to pieces now on a $28 million valuation? You think this is worth $10 million? Absolutely. Okay, now I'm going to rip your pieces. Are you absolutely. out of your mind? Your valuation's insane. Your valuation's crazy. I think that's a crazy valuation. I think your valuation is stinky poo-poo. <laughs> oh, no, you didn't. Canadians are so vulgar. <laughs> How is he not this mad about overvaluations in the real world? So you see him, he's speaking about why people should be mad about overvaluations. And he says that there's no victim in this. Now, if you really think about it, he sold his home in New York City for 800 and let's just say he overvalued his home. For uh, what was the percentage? The percentage was 829%. So isn't the victim the guy who paid above price for it? Overvaluing? But let's keep listening because he's talking about overvaluement. Okay, let's keep going. Because they are not victimless crimes. First, the banks got paid back at lower interest rates. Although, to be honest, who gives a shit? But second, <laughs> money isn't infinite. A loan that goes to the liar doesn't go to someone who's giving a more honest evaluation. So the system becomes incentivized for corruption. And this is part of a different Trump fraud case, but avoiding taxes hurts all of us. Donald Trump shenanigans cost the city of New York. Isn't that what you just got caught doing though? Ladies and gentlemen, slam the like. This is about to get crazy because he's legitimately 
And I think this is why Democrats are, they're dumb. One of the, not all of them, obviously, sorry. that There might be some Democrats in here. But this is why I think that you have to question everything. You have to be kind of paranoid. Only the paranoid survive. He's on this show screaming about, oh, the taxpayers got ripped off. Everybody got ripped off. But, bro, didn't you do the same thing to somebody? Didn't you also avoid paying taxes by selling your home over that? Let's keep listening to this because we're going to read about, like, this is crazy. And to be honest, and let's be frank here, that is money that the city of New York could have used to build more Walgreens. Now, some blocks only have two of them. <laughs> Leave it to Kevin O'Leary to be unaware enough to say the quiet part out loud. I hear about the, the so-called victimless crimes, but the laws on the books, falsification of business records in second degree, issuing false financial statements, insurance fraud, conspiracy, and all these different aspects of it, those are actual crimes. I take it your point is, that these should not have been prosecuted? Everything you just listed off is done by every real estate developer everywhere on earth in every city. This has never, ever been prosecuted. There is a theory in law that if enough people commit a crime, it automatically becomes legal. You're familiar with the purge, are you not? The anyways, anyways, let's, let's, let's read. Let's read some of this. So John Stewart's own property history, which shows an over overvaluation of his New York City penthouse by staggering 829 percent records confirmed by the post. This is the place, right? This is the duplex. Um, if you guys want to go look at it, you guys can look at it. I'll drop a link down below. So in 2014, I hope you guys can see this. Let me take myself off here. All right. So in 2014, Stewart sold this. Uh, 6,280, um, 6,200 square foot Tribeca duplex to a financier, a financier uh, Parag Pandey, for 17.5 million. The property's asking price at the time is not available in listing records. But according to the 2013 2014 assessor records obtained by the Post, the property had a, the estimated market value at only $1.8 million. Wait a minute. So, how do you sell your home for 17.5? <laughs> That's weird. The actual assessor valuation was even lower at only $847,000. Records also show that Stewart paid significantly lower property taxes. Mm, really? Is that so? Which were calculated based on the assessor valuation price. Precisely what he called Trump out for doing on his Monday monologue. So you called out Trump for basically overvaluing his properties. But you did the same thing. And you also, you Stewart pays significantly lower property taxes. Hmm, I wonder why. Panday, who was the guy who bought it, who purchased the penthouse uh, from Stewart, then resold the property at a nearly 26% loss, according to the real deal, at just over $13 million in 2021. So the guy took an L. By the way, here's all the information that you need right here. Assessment role, uh, uh, taxable status, January 5th, 2013. Uh, real estate, John Stewart right here. This was the this was the buying. So the market value at that time was only 1.8 million. Um, so yeah, let's keep going. Tim Pool, a political commentator known, known more for his right-leaning views. Of course, they had to throw that out there. Uh, right-leaning views alleged on X that Stewart was being a hypocrite. Did John Stewart commit fraud when he sold his penthouse for for almost for over almost eighteen million dollars? New York listed its market value at a one point eight, an AV, an average at around eight hundred thousand. Who did the defraud? I am shocked. He wrote, "This is right in Letitia James' jurisdiction." I look forward to the grand jury indictment, <laughs> which we know it's never going to happen. But this was the post right here, um, and this is the receipt. Um, John Stewart. This was posted by Tim Pool. Tim Pool is really, um, really the one that broke the story open. Tim Pool, shout out to him. He says, "Meanwhile, the uh, the New York City, the New York access, uh, assessor, excuse me, valuation on Stewart's former penthouse in the exact same citation method and metric that New York Attorney Letitia James used to value Trump's private and personal properties, 
and then sued him for inflating those assets. So once again, Trump got sued for inflating his assets. Meanwhile, in her own backyard, legitimately, that's happening with Jon Stewart. Meanwhile, Jon Stewart gets on national television and tries to embarrass Kevin O'Leary. But he's doing the same thing. This guy is a piece of crap. He's a piece of crap. So you, you basically try to hold Trump accountable for doing this, but you were doing the same thing. You were inflating your assets. Once again, let's keep reading here because it's not over, right? This includes Trump's Mar-a-Lago uh, uh, real estate in Palm Beach, known as his main residence, which was basically valued at um, only 18 million at the time. Real estate brokers had valued the property at 50 times more than that amount. Um, they try to say this was only 18 million. Come on, bro. Come on. Come on. Save for his private 200 acre uh, New York family estate in Westchester, which is not too far from me, which was um, valued at about 30 million to 56 million. Uh, Trump had valued his property, known as Stepping Springs, at 261 million dollars. That's because that's probably what it's worth after a president lived there. So there you have it. Um, this is what Donald Trump got in trouble for, for allegedly inflating his value. Once again, last month, Manhattan Supreme Court Justice Arthur Engorn, known as Moron, um, ordered Trump to pay $355 million and temporarily banned him from doing businesses, business in New York State, relying heavily on the asset value uh, valuations of the properties. So is John Stewart going to get the same Trump treatment for overvaluing and making millions and basically robbing somebody? Is he going to get that same treatment? I don't know. I really don't know if he's going to get the same treatment. I don't know. But we'll see what happens. Look, he even came out. He's freaking out. He just posted this. This has over 1.4 million views. He came out. And this is what he had to say. John Stewart says, oh, my God, I've been. What happened? Huh? Okay. I've been caught doing something not remotely similar to Trump. He's yelling, by the way. He's mad about this. I guess all I need to do now is start a fraud college, steal classified documents, bankrupt casinos, pay hush money, grab PUSSYs, discriminate in housing, cheat at golf and uh, foment uh, insurrection and blah, blah, blah. So he's freaking out about this and he's trying to call out Trump as an insurrectionist, blah, blah, the same talking points. And unfortunately, I think John Stewart is a very smart person. But as we all know, all these people are just compromised. These are the same people that shared and held hands with Diddy, um, which will probably never even do a segment on Diddy. How many times did I tell you yesterday, after I showed the Diddy videos, after we've been talking about Diddy, how many times did I tell you that all these people are going to spend their whole time talking about who? Donald J. Trump. They're going to be talking about Trump. They will not be talking about Diddy. They're not going to be talking about Diddy. John Stewart could have led his monologue to talk about Diddy. But guess what? They won't. Trump, 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 Trump all the time. And then you get caught inflating. You get caught literally doing the same thing that every real estate person does. When they own something, they try to get the most money out of it. And you overvalue it to see who fishes, to see who does it. Now that that's a crime in New York City, I think you should be held accountable. But guess what? You probably won't. And unfortunately, that's just the way things are. That's just the way things are. It just it just corny to see these things happening. It's really corny to see people like John Stewart melt down over Trump, but then inflate their homes by eight hundred and twenty nine percent. Also, here's another here's another thing I want to put out there. Here's a rumor that Trump. Here's a, first of all, this is a black man saying this. Is, this is what he says that Trump should do. Let's take a listen. Do you think that Donald Trump should sue New York Attorney General Letitia James? And on what grounds? I think I, I, I think she should. I saw an interesting little uh, comment of hers I, I not seen before the other day. Uh, she said when she's running for Attorney General that uh, she wants to fight administration that's too male, too pale, and too stale. Now, you can talk about stale ideas. That's fine. But too male and too pale, 
that constitutes basically uh, sex and race discrimination. Oh. So I think what uh, President Trump ought to do is sue her on the basis of the 1964 Civil Rights Act. Uh, her office gets federal money, in fact, $311 million approximately for various subsidies for uh, uh, law enforcement activity. So the federal money is flowing into her office. And if she is engaged in that kind of sexual and racial discrimination and, and that kind of language, I think she's wide open to exposure on the 64 Civil Rights Act. Donald J. Trump should sue Letitia James on the basis of civil rights. Have you damn suggested this to Trump? I will. So I'm writing about this. He's listening. I, I, I think he'll message will get to him sooner or later. Good. Damn. That's a good point. Can't lie. Can't lie. Ladies and gentlemen, slam the like button. Join the locals. If you really support this channel, if you want to take that support to the next level, I would suggest you please join the locals. Support me. Ladies and gentlemen, I need all the support that I could get. So please head on over to the locals. Uh, once again, I love you guys. Hit the like button. And for a lot of you guys, when you go to the locals, you don't have to pay annually. You could just pay monthly, whatever, or you could just follow the locals. You could click this, click that. And uh, that will truly help me a lot. And uh, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, a lot of truth has come out about these Democrats that are just liars. And shout out to Tim Pool. I'm not the biggest fan of Tim Pool, but I got to say shout out to him. Shout out to Tim Pool. Shout out to Tim Pool for exposing the story and making it bigger. Uh, throughout the day. And now we shall see what the next meltdown is going to be for Jon Stewart. If he's going to try to point the fingers back at Trump instead of holding himself accountable and saying, hey, you know, that extra money that that guy paid, that could have been used to build something or do something or be something. A lot of these Democrats, nah, they just be lying. I love you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this report. Once again, if you could slam the like right now, slam it. Don't waste any time. I love you guys. And I'll see you guys on the next one.